1. Hey everyone. Today, we're diving headfirst into a legal hot potato, the Colorado Supreme Court's decision to yank Donald Trump from the 2024 presidential ballot. Now, before you grab your pitchforks and head to the comments, let's unpack this with a clear head and see if the court's logic holds water. The gist is this. The Colorado court ruled that Trump's alleged role in the January 6 Capitol riot disqualifies him from holding any federal office, citing Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. This section bars anyone who has engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the United States from holding office. Sounds pretty cut and dry, right? Well, not so fast. The matter ignores a fundamental legal distinction. The key point here is that being on the ballot and being president are two separate legal matters. It's like buying a car and driving it. You can own a car without a driver's license, but you can't legally operate it on public roads. It's the same with Trump. The court can argue he's ineligible to hold the office, but can it deny him the right to be on the ballot itself? Now, Trump claims he didn't do that, but for the sake of this argument, let's say the court's right. Even if Trump engaged in insurrection, does that automatically mean he can't be on the ballot? No, he could be elected but not become the president. Granted that may seem a waste, but that is his and your right to vote on candidates of your choice. Additionally, he could petition Congress to have the disqualification removed with a two-thirds vote. He could also allege that any state denying him being on the 2024 ballot should be grounds for an immediate presidential re-election. Here's where things get interesting. The 14th Amendment doesn't mention anything about being on the ballot or running. It focuses on holding office, meaning actually exercising the powers and duties of the presidency. Being on the ballot, however, is simply the people's right to choose their representatives. It's a democratic process, a chance to express their will and rights. Think about it this way, just because someone can't drive, doesn't mean they can't own a car, right? They can still participate in the car market, choose the vehicle they want, and even gift it to someone else. Similarly, denying someone a place on the ballot restricts the voter's choice, potentially silencing their voices in the democratic process and denying a legal right. The Colorado court argued that allowing Trump on the ballot would legitimize his candidacy, implying support for insurrection. But hold on a minute. Being on the ballot isn't an endorsement. It's simply an acknowledgement that a significant portion of the population wants their voice heard through that candidate. It's not about condoning actions, it's about upholding the democratic right to choose earned by the blood of our children and our forefathers. 8. Furthermore, disqualifying someone from the ballot based on the 14th Amendment without a proper trial or conviction sets a dangerous precedent. It opens the door for potential abuse where political agendas could influence such decisions, infringing on the very foundation of fair elections or as my father would have said puts the cart before the horse. So, to wrap it up, the Colorado Supreme Court's decision raises some serious concerns. While the Colorado court has the right to interpret the 14th Amendment as they see fit, denying someone a place on the ballot based on an untested accusation and without considering the legal distinct separation between ballot and presidency seems like a questionable legal decision that potentially undermines our democratic processes. Opinions and predictions by influential persons or groups are not determinable legal decisions and are worthy only for wrapping fish. Ultimately, the voters deserve the right to choose their representatives, even if they choose someone the court or some may disagree with. That's the beauty of democracy, the messy, sometimes surprising, but ultimately essential right to have your voice heard.